everyone. I'm going to do another Fort NTL game now. This is from the same weekend as the game against Alan Downham. So I was playing black this time against an opponent called Charlie Cook, who is 138 ECF and 1754 converted V Day. So um, I'm a lot, I was a lot lower than that in the game, but I've been playing about that strength, so I expect to um, at least to draw here with black pieces. The game was against uh, for 3C2 against Metropolitan. They um, were quite as strong as I seen it, but they had started some like they still heavily upgraded us. Like our average for the weekend was about 1700, and theirs was about 1900 to, to oh, 1900 to 2000. Anyway, let's get on with the game now. D4, Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight C3. So we've got I've got a few options here. The three most common are. Um, uh, C5, which leads to the Benone. D5, transposing into a Queen's Gambit declined. Or the Nims Windy defense with Bishop B4. This is one of the most sold defenses, this to um, D4. It was um, popularized by Aaron Nimzovich in the 1920s. And the idea is to fight over E4. Because obviously, if White plays E4 now, you just take with the Knight. Although that is an interesting little gambit. But. <laughs> Or well, shouldn't be taken seriously. Has several options for white here. There's sharp ones such as f3, g3, and a3, and there's, there is positional ones such as e3 and the move played, which was queen c2. The idea of this move is that I'll, en I'll end up being forced to swap the bishop on c3, and then why well, I can take back with the queen, avoiding the, the double pawns. However, this move does waste a bit of time, and it, ma it makes um, d4 more vulnerable. This was um, Capablanca's favourite, this. Control over e4. It's very solid. And here, um, black can play um, like c5, d5, castles. But there's also um, the Hubner blockade, which is knight c6. The idea is that I'm going to swap the um, bishop off of the knight on c3 at some point. But then I'm going to block the whole position up by putting my pawns on um, dark squares so the other bishop's good and then um, white's um, dark square bishop won't be able to do anything. You know, just, um, I'll be left with a, bishop, a good knight against a bad bishop. So where the game continue, knight f3, d6, preparing e5, a3, takes, queen takes, castles, e3, rook e8, Bishop e2, e5, and now d5. And there, um, I've seen that knight b8 is supposed to be the best move, but I'm sure knight e7 is better, because I ain't wasting time with this knight. I should have gone to e7, I think. But if you have a look at the position, why it's dark square bishop is absolutely terrible, whereas my light square bishop is potentially um, quite powerful. Because I've put my pawns on dark squares and I've got quite good knights. But white has got more space though, so the position probably is a bit equal. Like b8. Queen back to c2. It's quite good because um, I might have been planning to put the bishop on f5. Take the strong diagonal. Bishop g4. Which has to go there, which isn't quite as good, but it's still good. e4. This frees up the um, bishop. Like B D seven. My pawn has got has a quite a lot of space advantage because here he goes B four, which stops the knight coming to C five. But I have a very good leading development, so the, I've, I've, I've equalised the position here quite comfortably. I, I'm not too keen on the Queen C two line to be honest. I think it's a bit of a time waster. And here I played Rook C eight. So the idea is uh, I might want to play c6 and um, challenge the centre. Or maybe c5. I have to be careful of getting a backward pawn d6 though. Now the bishop comes up to e3. And now I decided to um, reroot the knight to f8. And then to g6. Now let's see. This position, uh, I've left the a7 pawn on pre. I was wondering, can... White get away with taking it. I don't think he can, but let's just double check. Bishop takes a7. B6. 
Now what's the reputation? If there is any. The best move given looks like being... Give it a few seconds. Um, Knight G1. Bishop takes knight. So bishop takes bishop. Knight takes bishop. Rook a8, queen a4, queen d7, b5. Uh oh, danger alert, knight takes e4. Yeah, it's not safe to take the pawn. This looks like best play this. Now white's position is completely falling apart and it's king still in the centre. So, um, back to the game. White decided to um, castle instead. Knight g6. And then my opponent continued he's like trying to take away as many outposts from my knights as possible because I was plenty plenty coming f4 here. Yeah? Do so want g3, but this move does weaken the light squares quite badly. And then I played um, a very bad move here. I took an f3. So basically I've activated this bishop I have, but I'm now I'm giving it up now. And I, I end up becoming really cramped. What I should have done instead perhaps was Maybe play a6, try and get some space on the queen side. I'm a bit cramped here, and this keeps equality. So rook a d1, queen d7, c5, and um, the position is about equal. It's dynamically equal. Why it's got why it's got a good attacking chances on the. Um, Queen side, but I've got a good attacking chances on the king side. I, I'm quite happy with this position. It's definitely better than what I did in the game anyway. So anyway, bishop takes, bishop takes. And here I went queen d7, thinking that um, I'm just going to plonk a knight into g4 or something like that. But here we um Seems to completely stop um, all my counterplay with Queen E2, which I missed. And now I'm very, very cramped. I've got hardly any space at all. My pieces can hardly move. And here I decided after a long think that I a, maybe a plan of um, getting some space. So I decided to play Rook F8 first. And here came Rook FC1. But I think Bishop G5 was a strong move. See, so you might have threatened to take an f6, which he gets rid of his bad bishop. Oh, can I play knight e8? No, I can't because um, bishop g4. So, um, I'd probably just smite queen, you have to smite queen e7, bishop g4, rook cd8, queen f3, and black's hardly got any space here. Clear advantage to white. b6, I play b6 and after have to fc1 bishop g5 is also strong here, yeah? I've also finally defended a7 I mean a7 must be on pre for moves but it's never been able to be taken because of b6 trapping the um, bishop in rook c3, not sure the point of that is, it's a bit slow c5, hitting back, but I've got a backward pawn d6 but there's, it's hard to get to and there's no knight to um, get it Bishop G5 is still strong as well. B5. And rook C7. Oh, I'm not sure I did that. A4. And then I decided to do a plan um, uh, which gets me more space. I need to break off the position with F5 or something like that. So I went 97 which begins it. However, now he goes Bishop G5. 98. I mean, it's very close to this. In fact, after bishop g4, and my queen only has um, one square and it walks into a pin as well, so it's quite risky doing this. And now, um, white's still got the advantage here, now, but now um, I'm almost getting f5 in now. In fact, I'm um, threatening to get f5 in, which should um, get some back. So white needs to um, act quickly on the queen side rather than 
playing H4, and which he did in the game, which doesn't really do anything against it. Also weakens the king side. What White should have done is attacked on the queen side before I get F5 in to distract me. So A5. Uh, now what's best? Takes. Rook C A3. Um, there's no way to defend A5, and now White's Rook is going to infiltrate. I haven't got time, I need to defend the Queen, so I have something like Queen B8. Takes. Say, say Knight G6. But it's basically admitting defeat on the F5 plan. Queen A2. And Black's Queen has completely fallen apart. This is decisive advantage to White. So my opponent missed a good chance there, instead plays h4, and I used to play h6, bishop d2, f5. And I've pr practically equalised now, f5 was the idea. And now my opponent plays the, um, so the best move is if he takes an f5 then I get a lot of space on the king side. Good attacking chances. Bishop h3, takes, queen takes. And now knight f6, bringing the knight back into the game with tempo. Oh, and by the way, bishop e6 check doesn't do anything. Just go king h8. So he goes back to e2. And now I play another good move, queen e8. So now I'm like bringing the queen into the game. Because white's king side's pretty weak. So I can put, bring it into g6. And now he goes rook f1. He realises that this rook needs to come into the game. Abandons his queen side attack and first to defend the king side against any potential onslaught. I bring the queen to g6. King h2. Adding pressure to oh, defending against any potential threats on g3. Knight f5. And now um, the knight's threatening to land on d4, which is a very strong square. So white actually realises it's that bad, he has to give the bishop pair up with takes. Queen takes. Now plays f3, which is a bit of a weakening move. And now I, I've got I've got activity on the king side now, I've probably slightly better here. I've got rook cf7. And then um, after king g2, the move was accompanied by a draw offer, which um, I accepted mainly because um, I had a few minutes left to move to make another six moves. And um, I was quite grateful having escaped from that dire position, but I should really be playing on here. I've got a really good F file pressure. I've also got um in fact I've got a strong quite a strong move here in knight e4. Um so obviously knight can't be taken. Because uh, if he takes then yeah he's taken F1. So the best move is rook e3 and then I win white's other bishop with takes, takes, queen h5, now f3 comes under fire, and back's better here, only slightly though, but still, it's, it's enough to go for it anyway. But anyway, that was um, a good game, that. We lost. We only just lost the match in the end, I think me playing on might have given us a better chance, but I think just like in the previous game, that we kind of come back from the dead. And thanks for watching, feel free to leave any comments and thoughts on YouTube, thanks very much.